What's up, everybody? Hello, and welcome to Table Talk tonight. My name is Ruel Gaviola, and I'm so happy to be here today. Happy Monday, fun day, right? Hope you all had a great weekend. Um, I'm really excited about today because um, we get to play one of my favorite games with one of my favorite people out there, Meeple Lady, and we're playing Backgammon, which is the hot new game from like 5,000 years ago. So hopefully you all will enjoy. This is a game that I really enjoyed. Uh, I mean, I just started getting to like 10 years ago. Um, but we're going to, uh, you know, I'm going to save that story. We're going to talk with Meeple Lady when she uh, comes on board here. want to shout out to everyone. Thank you for joining us. Amanda Panda is our chat moderator. So please keep things PG-13 in chat or else Amanda is busting up the band hammer. We don't want that to happen. I see all the regulars there. Hey, for you regulars, um, I've got a new thing here. So we're going to do roll call. Um, I see um, Slackfish. Panda Angel, of course, um, uh, Twin Flower, Grizzly Diz. We, I see a lot of familiar faces. Slackfish, of course. Mrs. Gav is out there. Um, hey, Netter's Place is here. Hey, uh, Netter's Place, thanks for joining us. And um, Table Stop, uh, PG, uh, Tables, Tables Top G3. Uh, thanks for joining us. I got this new thing. So I'm going to do this for Roll Call. This is Roll Call, folks. Wee, right? Cool new effects for you. We do nothing but the best in analog game effects here, folks. So there it is for everybody. Roll call. Y'all are here. I've taken roll. Thank you for joining us um, again. And Netters, I'm glad to have you on here. Thank you for hanging out with us. A um, couple of things first before we get going. want to shout out our sponsors uh, for this episode. We have two great sponsors, as always, with um, Van Ryder Games. And uh, let me get Van Ryder Games' logo up here to cover my face. There they are. Van Ryder Games, they're publishers of many great games. One of my favorites is Hostage Negotiator, which is a solo game. So please check out Van Ryder Games at vanridergames.com. If you haven't played the Hostage Negotiator, check it out, folks. It's a really fun solo game, especially during these times when we're trying to limit our social interaction and do the social distancing thing. Solo games are great, right? So check out Hostage Negotiator from Van Ryder Games. And our other sponsor, as always, is Holly Chu Illustration. Uh, Holly is the genius artist behind all of our graphics and art here on the channel. Our emotes are all from Holly Chu. Please drop those emotes in chat, folks. Um, let's uh, see those uh, emotes that Holly has created for us. She's an amazing artist. So I want to thank Holly, as always, for all of her hard work. There they are right there. Panda Angels got them all there. And uh, nothing but the best in analog effects. Thank you, Twin Flower. Always appreciate your support, my friend. Um, what else do we have to announce today? So we got a great week coming up. If you don't follow already, please check out our Facebook page uh, under Tabletop Tonight. That's Tabletop and then two and the number two and night all in one word. And um, you'll be able to see the, um, our schedule for the week, upcoming week. So along with Meeple Lady tonight, uh, Michelle and hopefully Lauren will be joining me tomorrow for we're going to play King of Tokyo, the dark edition, the brand new one from uh, Yellow. And then Wednesday, I'm joined by Amanda Panda here in chat and also John Gonzalez. We do a, a show every Tuesday at 3 p.m. called Board in East L.A. And on Wednesday night here on Tabletop Tonight, we're going to bring some of that Board in East L.A. flavor here. We're going to play Red 7 and For Sale. And then Thursday night, my buddy Daryl, uh, Daryl Durson, he's a local gaming friend of mine. He's also a game designer. He is going to join me for Castles of Burgundy. And what we're going to do, excuse me, we're going to play the Castles of Burgundy 20th anniversary um, edition. So it's the actual board game. We're not doing the app. So I'm going to, we're going to try to do this. Hopefully it'll work, but we're going to play Castles of Burgundy, the actual board game uh, through uh, the wonders of the internet. There's all our emails. Thank you, Twin Fire, for shouting that out. And let's see what else I got going. Hey, Grizzly Diz is here. Yes. Um, thank you, Amanda. There is the link in chat, folks. So please check us out on Facebook. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh, I want to also shout out our Patreon supporters, um, especially our, <coughs> excuse me, our all access and very important gamer patrons. We've got Mike, Kevin, and Jeff. So we've got um, three special um, supporters right now. We've got, um, I really just want to thank you all for your support. You're helping me make this stream better. And we've got some technology upgrades that are coming up real soon. So I'm excited. I'll, I'll announce that soon. But you will see, if you're a Patreon supporter, you actually see the behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on here. And uh, one of the things I just... Um, posted last week was some of the technology upgrades that are coming to the show. So I'm excited about that. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you know all about it. I want to thank you again for your support. Uh, who else is in chat here? I see a lot of, uh, thank you. Thank you, Netters. Yes, love Castles of Burgundy. And 
it's such a good game and i haven't even played the app yet have y'all played the app because i heard it's really good but again i'm old school i love the analog stuff so i just got the 20th anniversary edition and you know a fun fact too i learned that it wasn't actually the 20th anniversary of the game which i thought i didn't think i knew that i know the game's older but i didn't think it was that old and sure enough uh friends here in chat last uh i think it was last week or the week before you know, informed me that it's the 20th anniversary of Aaliyah, which is the publishing company that um, has been publishing for 20 years. Castle and Burgundy is only nine years old, not 20 years. But they did this like thing called the 20th anniversary edition. So um, yeah, it, it's it, it looks it looks good. I still have a few issues because of the color blindness, but I think overall it's an improvement on the original. And uh, Netters uh, says I've only played Castle Burgundy on Yucatan. Yeah, that's another. I haven't even um, I haven't been to Yucata. Is it Yucata or Yucata? I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I haven't been to that side in a while. I need to check out because I'm usually a board game arena um, player, but I will check out that site too. Um, Odin Fong is in the house. Thank you, Odin, for uh, hanging out with us. And yeah, Ben Osteen's here. Thank you, Ben. Yes, solid favorite. Still good. Agreed. It's such a great game. And you know, I have a visitor here. I, I got to show off our, our pug, um, Bruno. Bruno, hi. <laughs> There he is. He just walked into the studio. Bruno, say hi to your friends. There's Bruno. Show some love for Bruno. Throw those emotes in there. Uh, he, okay, he, he wants to go. <laughs> bye, Bruno. <laughs> um, Tabletop 3 says, you could have some great implementations. I think I've only played like one game on that site. But um, yeah, there's the Bruno emails. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, Jeff Bailey's here. Thanks for hanging out, Jeff. And... Um, I don't know if Bruno's going to hang out or, well, yeah, he's just going to, he's going to chill. So there are some more Bruno emotes. Folks, okay, let's get going here. Let's get down to business. We got a special guest here tonight, and I want to bring her on in just a second here. Um, so, oops. So, of course, now, now my computer is a little laggy here. Hopefully, y'all can still see me and hear me. Got a little bit of lag here. I'm trying to fix something, but thanks for hanging out. Um, you know, while I'm here and I'm pulling up this file, why don't y'all let me know what your stream stacks are? What are you uh, stacking on? What are you drinking on? I've got my LaCroix uh, peach pear flavor today. And I actually have some little lemon, like they're called just desserts, lemon bites. I don't know if they're like little cookies or whatever, but I scored the best deal at the store today. These were 50 cents, normally like four bucks. I think they're going to turn bad tomorrow or something. <laughs> but they're pretty tasty. They're not bad. Um, let me uh, find my thing here. Do, 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 do. Yay, technology. Okay. And um, Amanda says, sadly, water. Well, you guys say hydrated. Uh, cheese sticks. All right, cool. Microwave popcorn and Diet Coke, always a good combination. Mint tea, wow. From it, really? Okay, Ben so far wins, folks. I mean, we're talking talk about locally sourced uh, tea and uh, mint right from their balcony. Uh, Twin Flowers got ruffle. Ooh, I like that combo. The onion dip is always a always a good thing. Um, but uh, keep keep talking the stream stacks. I want to get um, Meeple Lady into here, so into the uh, stream. So let's let's get this show started, shall we? Uh, thank you again, friends, for hanging out. And I'm about to bring on Meeple Lady. Meeple Lady is a board game addict who loves heavy Euros and strategy games, writing about board games, editing rule books, and meeting fellow gamers. She's also a contributor to the 5 by podcast. And without further ado, I'm so happy to bring on my guest and my friend, a Meeple Lady. There she is. Hi, Meeple Lady. Oh, I, I guess I should turn her on your mic. I'm sorry. Oh, Hi, okay. Meeple Lady. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. It's so good to see. We haven't um, actually seen each other in real life for for a minute now. It's been a while, right? It's been a while. Um, yeah. I can't even remember the last time. Was it a convention? Las I, Vegas? I, I, I'm I feel assuming like it was Las it was Vegas. Like, yeah. So that was like last year's Dice Tower mm -hmm. West, I think, right? Wow. Yeah. That, that's incredible. That's uh -huh. just, yeah. That, and, and now with the current situation and everything, I mean, it's it's unfortunately been a little longer, right? Yeah. So. Okay. Until we get to hang it. Yeah, but at least we have the internet, right? So we can hang out here. So thank you again for joining me. Um, Meeple Lady, for those of you uh, those of you in the audience who don't know, um, can you uh, share a little bit about how you got into board games? 
Um, yes. Okay. So back in 2014, well, actually, no, it was 2010. I got a copy of Ticket to Ride and I'm like, Ooh, what is this? It was a gift. And I sort of fell into the rabbit hole that was Board Game Geek and started my co small collection there. But it wasn't until 2014 that um, I decided to start writing about it and blogging and, you know, being active on social media and going to conventions and meeting other people. Um, and the rest is history. Like it was good. Like in the beginning, there weren't too many people that, that looked like me. So it was good to um, just reach out and meet a lot of other content creators or people of color. Yep. Um, and ever since then, like, I think we've all grown and the community has grown and it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful yeah. ride. Uh, agreed. And I I remember like when I first, I, I mean, I'm a, I've been on Twitter for a while, but I didn't really do the board game Twitter thing until like five, four or five years ago. And I remember, I don't remember how we connected, but we connected there. And I always thought it was amazing to see, you know, uh, someone that looked like me and that was in the board games, but also creating content. So that was your big inspiration to me oh. back in the day. And you still are. You, you still are. I mean, you do amazing work, not only on the five by, but you know, I've said this before, and I remember I, I ran to Michelle when I saw it, when the first time I saw your name in Fireball Island for mm -hmm. the rules editor. I'm like, look, please, please. <laughs> that was so cool. How did you get into the whole rule book editing? Uh, um, yeah, I think I just put out a call on Twitter um, that I wanted to do more, more rule book editing. Um, in real life, I'm an editor. Um, and I just wanted to merge my two hobbies together. And um, through that, just contacts, people reaching out, um, and have been doing it ever since as freelance, and it's been fun. And you know, like a, a good rule book, like makes or breaks your gaming experience. So I think it's really important. And I think, um, you know, in the past couple of years, people have been, you know, put putting a lot of effort into that, which is good for everybody. Yeah, uh, definitely. I remember. I mean, I just think about rule books from like older games, you know, you look at them and it's like, oh, they're, you know, sometimes the organization isn't the best or the writing isn't that uh, that great. Or it's just like, I, I think of like some of those, um, like an old Avalon Hill game that I used to have. I think it was, it was like either a baseball game or a basketball game, but I just remember the, I could, I don't think I ever played it correctly back in the uh -huh. day as a kid, but you know, as a kid, you just sort of like, oh, whatever, you know, you just sort of make it up as you go. Like Monopoly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like none of us have ever played Monopoly correctly? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I, I always wanted to try that. I always want to, uh, you know, I tell my friends like, why don't we try to play Monopoly by the rules, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I, have you ever actually played it by the like? Uh, no, we've played like Cheaters Monopoly, the one with the handcuffs. Has anyone played that? It's, oh, I don't know that one. What is that? It's pretty fun. It looks like Monopoly after dark, but it's not. It's just okay. the Cheaters <laughs> where you're trying to like, um, they're like objectives. You're trying to steal money or like put, you know, a hotel down where a house should have been, you know, and you sort of, mm -hmm. it, it incentivizes you to cheat. And if you get caught, you get handcuffed to the board. <laughs> and it's like a really short game, but it's like really fun. It's just like chaos. And that's funny. I've never, so is it an official Monopoly yeah. or is it? Oh, it's okay. Like a target. Cool. Yeah, it comes with handcuffs. So it's no nice. <laughs> Got a couple of comments here I want to throw up on the screen. So Panda says, bad rule books can kill games because people can't play them. Mm -hmm. uh, Twin Flowers, speak the truth, people lady. Rule books are so important. Uh, Alex says, games are the rules. All the bits just make it easier to play. Mm -hmm. And um, Ben says, Monopoly by the rules is still long-winded and dire, but not as terrible as the house rule version. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Have you played um, Monopoly recently? Have you? <laughs> oh, no, not the original one. I mean, like, granted, like, you know, we've been moving and I was like, oh, my God, I still have, like, copies of Monopoly, like, deep yeah. in my collection. I don't know, just for nostalgia reasons um, that yeah. I still have them from childhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, editing rule books, how long does that process take? And do you come in? I just want to give a little insight to those who have never done it before. Um, like, do you come in like at the start of the uh, um, development of a game or at the end? And how long does it normally take? Um, it seems like I, I sort of come in near the, not the tail end, but like not at the very, very beginning. Like there is some type of rule PDF, like written down, created. And um, I come in right there and, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of, look at you know in addition to grammar and readability like structurally does this make sense to talk about battles here or is it later there um a lot of that is sort of the flow of how the game is and you sort of get a feel for how the game should play or also like who is their audience like will people understand this um 
is this too wordy? Is this written like a novel? Like this needs to be broken down into more functional bits. And then, um, and then reach out to the designer. Like this really needs like a graphic to explain like how this thing is carried out. Um, you know, I'm not a graphic designer, but I will make those suggestions. Like this is much more visual. This should have an example, etc. So that's usually where I um, come through with that. And um, then, you know, you work with the designer, send it back and, you know, then it's out there in the world. <laughs> nice. And uh, just knowing you personally, I know you're big into heavy euros, and I know you like your war games. Um, have you uh, had a chance to work on a war game or heavy euro rule books at this point? To this point, um, not yet. Though I have a one that's coming up um, that's due at the end, um, in like about a month or so, which is a a little bit heavier. So I'm excited for that. Nice, nice, yeah. and I. I'm assuming like all of your editing experience comes into play here. And also, mm -hmm. you know, especially with, uh, you're, you know, you're going to start looking at these heavier games. I mean, there's going to be a lot more rules and stuff. Is there like a particular way that you like to set up things or does it just depend on the game or? Oh, it just depends. I actually like sometimes if it's not too much, like I like to print out the actual like rules and then just sort of like marker with the red market, sort of make notes on myself before I put yes. it in the digital like notepad and then send all the feedback back. So nice. I like having the paper. I don't know, I'm old school, but I like having the pages to flip through. And then, you know, you're like looking at the things and how it looks back, to, you know, side to side versus when you're scrolling down on the PDF. So, right. You know, I, I totally agree with you. I'm the same way. Whenever I edit or write something, you know, I need to print it out for, you know, <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have the convenience of the electronic version, whether it's on your phone or your computer, or laptop, or whatever. But yeah, there's something about having it on the actual page that you can flip over and write on and stuff. And I know there's electronic tools to do that, but I just I just prefer you know pen yes. and paper. You Me know? too. <laughs> I, don't know what that, I don't know what that is. It's just yeah. one of those things. Uh, ben mentions that the story of Monopoly is fascinating, though, given how it was a stolen design based on Lizzie uh, Maggie's uh, social morality game. Yeah, that's true. I, I've read some of that history before. Have you read any of the his, uh, history of the actual game? I have not. Yeah, have it was like a, it was like a critique on of, of capitalism, basically. Okay. I can see yeah, that. And the, yeah, and it was a woman designer, and she had it stolen by, you know, whoever end up, you know, making all the money off of it. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Netter says, I think we're all the same about touching pieces and even paper rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there there really is. A, it is a difference. And that's, you know, um, in the intro, I was talking about how I'm going to play Castles of Burgundy on Thursday, and it's going to be the actual physical version, not the digital implementation. But mm -hmm. um, anyways, <laughs> it's digital. I'm not, we're not totally, you know, I'm not totally down on digital because we're going to be able to play backgammon thanks to our digital mm. <laughs> digital world here. Um, but speaking of backgammon, really fun of like playing, you know, the dice in the cup and like rattling yeah. in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of backgammon, yeah, speaking of rattling dice in someone's face, how did you get into backgammon? Okay, this is like such a nerdy story. I don't even know if I've like mentioned this, but um, many years ago. Uh, I was a Lost fan from the TV show, and there was like a really cool character on there, um, John Locke by Terry O'Quinn, who's like a serious actor, and every time you see him in something, you're like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? You don't know. Um, he had brought backgammon to the island, and he was teaching Walt, and I'm like, wow, what is his game? This is interesting. Like, I should check it out. And then there was like an $8 set at Target one day, so I'm like, I will get it. And then um, one of my friends was over at my house, and... He's like, oh, do you play backgammon? I'm like, no, I just bought the set. Like, I haven't learned it. He's like, oh, I'll teach it to you. And then he taught me, and then that was history. And, you know, for a while at my last job, many, many years ago, like, we had a backgammon club. Like, you know, every other week we would all gather. And, um, you know, there's there's not that many people anymore um, that I do that with. But at least once a month we try to go out to play backgammon. Um, and I don't know. It's fun. I love it. It's one of those games that you can just, like, hang out at the bar and play and um and yeah like now i'm especially missing like hanging out at the bars <laughs> like yeah with friends right. and you know hanging out getting dinner um yeah and then i always have a backgammon set in the back of my car so that same target set has like survived many years and you know nice. it's a little dinged but it totally works <laughs> Yeah. I love it. That's a great story. I, I have a old, um, when I got into it about 10 years ago, it was because uh, I was playing, my game night was actually poker night. So mm -hmm. that's all we do is play poker night, uh, play poker once a week. And then I found out that a lot of poker players, or at least high high stake poker players, not me, uh, high stakes poker players would play backgammon. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I just taught it to myself and I started teaching my friends and cousins. And yeah, so we'd play po uh, backgammon in between like poker hands and stuff. <laughs> that's and, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. But um, Jeff says uh, that, uh, yes, they played backgammon in season one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tabletop Go, or G3 says, don't they play Go in later seasons, The Light in the Dark? I'm not sure. I don't remember. If so. I always yeah. thought it was backgammon because they had a black and white set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Then Jeff. See, I don't know anything about Lost. So uh, Jeff says, I think Locke mentions a battle between light and dark. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ben does say that the backgammon dice play is a rarely used mechanism, but it is a fun one. Tatsu is a good two player game. Oh, okay. I've never played uh, Tatsu. Have you played that one? I haven't played it. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, for those of you who haven't played, I mean, backgammon, it's basically a race, right? We're trying to get our checkers off. And I'll, we're going to play here, folks, on Board Game Arena in just a few minutes. But if you've never played, it's basically a race. You're just racing your checkers off the board. But there's certain rules and things that you have to uh, do. But um, <laughs> Table Stop 3 says, spoilers, LOL. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. <laughs> I've read some of the stuff on Wikipedia about loss, but not much. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mean, I think it's so cool that you would get together every two weeks or once a month now to play backgammon. Is it like there's a lot of people and then do you do like a, is it just one on, like, do you do tournament style or how or is it just real super casual? Uh, it's, now it's super casual because all the people that I'd worked with had like moved away. But there was a time where we would just sort of like, oh, who's available and sort of play each other, you know, back and forth. There was one season i don't know where we actually had like a tournament and there was money on the line so that was really Ooh. fun <laughs> <laughs> did you win that tournament i did not but it was fun <laughs> it was like money stakes but usually in the very beginning we would actually bet two with the doubling cube um yeah. for dimes um you know nothing nothing big though yeah. it can get out of hand if you get backgammoned and <laughs> exactly yeah you get skunked so back, when you get backgammoned that's uh is it three times or four times yeah it's double a uh, triple triple and then yeah. if it's gammon you're doubled mm -hmm. and then otherwise it's just the the value of the double and die correct yeah i think it's such a fascinating history of the game so again folks if you've never played back game this game has literally been around trace of it had been found like five thousand years ago right and it's survived all this time and it wasn't until I uh, I don't know if you know the history, uh, Maple Lady, but is wasn't it like around the 1920s or so in the U.S. where the doubling cube was introduced? Oh, I didn't know that. That seems very American. <laughs> yeah, it's totally American, right? I, it was in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, around early early 20th century, and it was like the backgammon clubs, and they and they just said, "Hey, doubling cube," and that's when it got really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Slackfish says, uh, "Yes, more much more interesting interesting when you have the stakes." Absolutely, like you. I mean, even when you're playing tournament play, that, that doubling cube can end the game at any time or mm -hmm. end the match at any time. So, or it just keep escalating, which is really fun. yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen like my in my personal stakes or games. I've never gone past eight. I think eight okay. is the highest. Have you actually done like sixty four? I, I have it, but we've watched people get sixty four <laughs> and then get back them, and so it was an eighteen dollar like. Oh my god! Yeah, just escalated. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah. and like you were saying, I, I totally agree with you. It's the type of game where once you know the rules, you can go to your local pub or a restaurant or even at home just chilling. It's like a super mellow, you know, mm -hmm. just chuck the dice and move the pieces. Exactly. But yeah. there's a lot of strategy and trying to mitigate like the dice. So yeah. Fun. Exactly. It's fun for everyone. Do you have you learned like I mean I know a little bit about like the opening moves and stuff like there's certain slots or spots you're supposed to go to with certain roles do you know that stuff uh, No I haven't really done that much research just sort of like oh what works best for me and sort of yeah. based on what you roll the first time Yep that's true mm -hmm. And uh okay let's uh, talk about some other games so you I'm hoping you're able to game during these times uh, mm -hmm. whether it's digitally or analog um anything stand out to you lately anything you've played that's been really good or... uh, recently actually like i i was off for all of august because i was moving but um i got a blog post up this morning for um pan am and yeah. that's a really fun game i really like it it's so fun and you know and it comes from funko and you know i wasn't expecting something of that um it's not a heavy game, but like it's heavier than everything they've published so far. I think it's their heaviest game. Oh, um, cool. And it's just super fun. We've only been playing at 2P because I haven't seen anyone in person to game with. Um, but I think it works really well and I'm excited to try it out. It 
you know, higher numbers, but it's yeah. just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's route building. It's bidding. I love the bidding sort of okay. just confrontational with like moving your pawns into nice. the bidding action. So um, it's fun. That's cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're building routes and stuff and you're bidding on like where you can fly. Is that how that works? Uh, you're bidding on your actions. Um, some oh, of okay. your actions, yeah. So, um, and then you're collecting destination cards because you're trying to claim routes between cities. And the, the tricky is, part is uh, you're trying to get big and get in the way of the Pan Am expansion. So Pan Am will buy your routes and you get make money oh, off of it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So That's it's a little cool. bit of that. Yeah. And then you have to, you know, have fleet, have airplanes for your routes and, uh, let, you know, you can put airports down, but you know, all of these things, most of these things require a bid for you to do that action. So it can get really tense. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to uh, trying. I. I mean, I love the theme. That whole Pan Am thing. I, again, as a kid, I remember Pan Am. I. I don't think we actually flew it as a kid, but I, I do remember. Yeah. Me, I do remember Pan Am. So that's great. Uh, Funko's. Um, along with that, don't they? I mean, they do the Funko Pop game, obviously, but mm -hmm. don't they do like? Uh, did they do a Godzilla game recently? Or I think they did. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, ben was asking, uh, better with more players or good with fewer players too? I've only done the 2P because obviously social distancing, but it's great at 2P. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, 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 it seems like something would be my wheelhouse. I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, we got some comments about backgammon, about game theory, um, optimal strategies, and uh, let me see. Uh, Slackfish, double cube is an amazing way to mitigate the luck of the die rolls. If things are going badly, you don't let the stakes get too high. True true mm -hmm. okay um one game that i played recently it was actually just last week was the back to the future dice through time Ooh. game uh-huh yeah that one if you like the back to the future trilogy like i would definitely recommend this it's very thematic um they have they have this like minimalist art so it's not like like photographs or like total like dead on illustrations of like the characters but they're like really minimalist where it's like you know they have the outline of the hair and, uh -huh. and the like Marty's jacket, you know, oh, and stuff like uh -huh. that. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a it's a cooperative game, and it's dice rolling. You're just trying to um, collect certain items and bring them back to uh, the right place in the years. So it's like the like 1985, 1955, 2015, and like 1885. So if there's like an item like you know Marty's skateboard, you got to get it back to 1985. So you go to a spot, um, try to complete an event by rolling dice, and when you do, you can take that item, and you have to spend some dice to like move between the different years. It's it's really cool. It's it's so so on point thematically and it's yeah it's it's really neat. It's maybe like a 30 to 40 minute game um for two to four players, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah two to four players. But obviously since it's a co-op, there's no hidden information. You could totally play it solo. Oh nice. Um, so yeah we played it last week. My my friend Patrick and I we did it um online here and we had a great time with it. It's it's really fun. Um I'm a I like Back to the Future. I'm not. I don't know if I'm Back to the Future trilogy super fan um, because I've only seen the second and third one maybe once or twice each, and I liked them. But I just something about that first one that was classic. Mm -hmm. you know, um, were you a Back to the Future fan? Um, uh, yeah, the actually, my my childhood mall is the mall. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna bring. Yeah, I was gonna bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Point Hills Mall in California was like the mall that I grew up in. You know, hang out with your friends after school and stuff. But um, <laughs> It's neat to see the parking lot still essentially looks like that. And inside the mall in one of the empty storefronts, they have the Twin Pines Mall sign just like sitting there. Like I think they brought oh, it really? back. For, yeah, because they brought the DeLorean and some and the sign for like the anniversary. And I think they kept the sign in the mall. And as of last year when I was there um, walking around, I was like, oh, look, it's a Twin Pines mall sign that's oh. outside it's inside so it's neat it's a neat nice. photo op <laughs> that's awesome i've never seen it there like i i always you know i was talking to michelle like we always thought that like why don't they you know leave it outside like some kind of like tourist like you know photo mm -hmm. op or whatever but um panda says that um uh, or on that says we all grew up in the same area yeah, up the as well. that's true uh, panda angel says they still put the delorean back every oh, nice. year okay a little hello from Steph Raccoon to Meeple Lady. And hello. yeah, I, I want to find that sign now. Yeah, <laughs> like, check it out. As of last, I think during the holiday, last like fall, it was there. Because I think that was the last time I was in there. Like on the way to Burlington Co-Factory. 
<laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Those that mall has different. changed. Yeah. Right? That mall has changed so much, though. Like mm -hmm. they have all those, like, uh, like on Azusa Avenue, they have all those extra stores and stuff, like where the Krispy Kreme is and all that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so so they funny. have the new Canes Canes uh, Chicken Strip, please. Raise, yeah. Oh wait, is that there too? Oh my god! Yeah, I love it, it. it took over Joe's Crab Shack. My sister is very excited. So. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah, that Joe's Crab Shack that was empty for a while. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And Twin Flower makes a great point. Didn't it end up being Lone Pine Mall in the end of the trilogy? Oh my goodness, I don't remember. I think I yeah. seen the second and third one once too, and I should yeah. go back and revisit those. That, uh, yeah, that's a great point because I know that. There's a couple of points in the trilogy or in the first movie where they like run over the uh, the pine tree and instead of twin pines, it becomes like lone pine mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, Odin says, how does Burlington <laughs> Coat Factory stay in business in California? That's a great question. You want to answer that one, me? I don't know. <laughs> there was other stuff. I'd never been. I was going somewhere cold last Christmas and I needed a coat. You know, me living in Arizona, like I have a hoodie. <laughs> Like I wear like just a couple times in the winter. So I was like, I need a coat. So then I was like, my mom's like, oh, let's go walk around. And so they had stuff other than coats. So I think it, it felt like a Ross kind of. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. But yeah, I'm sure it gets cold for people like, yeah. So I finally got a coat. I have the one coat that I use when it, <laughs> you know, dips below 60 degrees for us. Uh, I was going to say, this, <laughs> like, do you actually like get snow out where you're at or anything? Um, not in the Phoenix area. Um, okay. Up north on um, Flagstaff, like that's two hours away. Like that gets like, it's winter up there. They have like pine oh, okay. trees and everything. That's closer to Grand Canyon and stuff, yeah. right? Okay, cool. Money uh, laundry. <laughs> money laundry <bed. laughs> that could be it right there, folks. <laughs> There's a oh lot of big bags. <laughs> Friends, uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, my name is Ruel Gaviola. I'm hanging out here with Meeple Lady. We're talking all kinds of stuff about games and stuff. We're going to play some backgammon in just a second. Uh, Meeple Lady, thank you again for joining me. we got some silliness going on in uh, chat here, <laughs> as always. Really, really good times. Um, any any other games you want to uh, talk about before we uh, get to backgammon? Anything um, you've played recently, either online or... Um, let's see. Um... I've been loving all the new games that they've been having on Board Game Arena. I think because of the pandemic, they like went into like full steam mode and like yeah. let's put a bunch of implementations. I really like City of Big Shoulders. It's so hard to say. Oh, that. that's on there now. Yes, it's so good. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, I've been dying to play that game. I, I know, like that was one of the last games uh, from one of the game nights that we had here. Um, that someone had brought, and I missed playing it, and then sure enough, COVID hit. It's like, oh, well, there goes oh, that yeah. chance. Well, it's there. I've never played it in real life. I'd always wanted to, so we've been playing yeah. it, and it's really good. If you ever want to oh, play it, let me know. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, have, is Barrage on Board Game Arena as well? It is not, I don't okay. think. Yeah. And we don't, okay. venture, we don't venture too much outside of Board Game Arena or the French site. Um, I don't know, oh, yeah. like, the Steam stuff is still, you know, I'll go on there if people really want to go, but we kind of like having the game play itself for, you know, like having the rules I, and everything. Thank you. you know. Agreed. Yeah. I 100% <laughs> agree. And that, like Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia, I understand they're great tools. And I've talked about this before where I'll, I'll use them if I have to, but I prefer not to. Like, yeah. I, I like I like having, you know, Board Game Arena where it's like they it knows the rules. Like, I can't just like, you know, do this you know, if it's not allowed or. Yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find myself on Tabletop Simulator as well, just spending more time like trying to flip over a card than actually playing. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to do like the camera. Like, I have to set up like all my camera angles so that I can That's just right. like shortcut. Otherwise, it's just like so much time. Like, you know, exactly. moving stuff around. So yeah, agreed. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, table says I was playing King Domino's Day on BGA, nice and fast plays, true. Mm -hmm. Um, and also you can't smack someone's a hand away on Tabletopia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff agrees with me. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it, it's a great tool, and I know people that really are into it. And I know it's a really good tool for uh, game designers as far mm -hmm. as like play testing and stuff. So you know, I, I know that they're using. Have you been able to play test any games during this time? Um, no, not really. I just haven't been 
it's been busy with the move and everything. So I yeah, play testing. Okay, and now, now you're all settled in. Have you? Um, the big question, of course, is: Do you have the game room set up? Are you ready? <laughs> <to play> it? <laughs> it's, it's still being packed away. Like there's just games <laughs> everywhere. The merging of board game collections is a. Uh, no joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you do with like, a, I'm sure you have like some overlap. What do you do with the doubles? Um, I don't know yet. I have a pile and like, okay. there's only about 30 games overlap, which is pretty impressive considering the size of Chris's games and a collection. And, you know, I don't have like a super duper large collection, but um, it's good to not have much overlap. So I have a list. I'm not sure exactly yet, like one thing at a time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Well, at least uh, I'm happy that you're all settled in. And you got that part. It's moving is all. I can't even imagine like moving during COVID. Like, was it like extra? I mean, I know you've moved before, but was it extra challenging to move during COVID? Oh my God. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, usually like, okay. So we didn't hire people mostly because we didn't want to hire strangers. Yeah. Um, so we were able to borrow my friend's truck and we did it ourselves. Um, okay. The only challenge was that it was 115, like every time we decided to move on the weekend. So oh, um, that was like the big thing. Um, so, but like, yeah, boxes of board games, there's a lot. I'm never <laughs> moving ever yet. Like, never <laughs> ever. <laughs> nice. Um, we got some comments here. Uh, Distant Babble, uh, one of our regulars said, Howdy, back in the first board game I ever learned. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Mike says that he got to play test hoop gods. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I am really looking forward to that. And Panda Angels reminded me that, hey, so we have an anonymous gifter uh, gifting five subs. So um, you you haven't been here yet for the uh, gifting thing, uh, Meeple Lady. So give me just a second. I need to get my little thing here. Okay. Okay. So what we do is, and I've got something new for everyone at home. uh, I got a little new thing here. So first, I want it's an it's an anonymous gifter. Oh wow, there's a couple of anonymous gifters. So anonymous gifter with five subs, and so alert, alert. Oh, let me do this. Uh, sorry, me, <laughs> lady. <laughs> alert, <laughs> alert. We have five new subscriptions, friends. Thank you, anonymous gift sub. Uh, anonymous gifter. Thank you so much for the five subs. I've got a brand new thing here that we're gonna do for gift subs. It's the rockers. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And it's the gift. So gift, 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 gift. It's a gift hat. Thank you, Manas, uh, Gifter. I really appreciate it. Meeple Lady, that is that what we exciting. do. Here. That's how we roll. <laughs> <I was laughs> thank like, you, Manas, Gifter, for gifting the subs. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get, Michelle gave me these earlier. So I <laughs> wanted mm-hmm. to put them to good use. So, um, anyways, uh, Meeple Lady, you want to play some backgammon? Sure. Let's All do right. It. Let's do this. Let's do this. So, what I need to do is figure out how to share our game. So we have it here on uh, Board Game Arena. Friends, thank you for joining us. Let me share our game. And I hope it shows up. There it is. Okay. Um, so I must. Okay. Okay, there it is. So we are playing backgammon. Uh, y'all can see that there. Uh, there's me and Meeple Lady. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Netters. Appreciate it. Um, so according to Board Game Arena, I'm going first. Um, we all set, Meeple Lady? Yeah. Okay. So I have rolled, or the computer has rolled, a six and a one. Um, I am, uh, is this yellow? I'm sorry. I have the the colorblind issues here. Is this a yellow piece? Or is that uh, I can't see what you're picking, but you are yellow. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. What you do is just whatever dice you roll, you just move that many pieces. Um, I am going in a horseshoe. We're going in like a horseshoe shape. So let me see if I can turn on my cursor here. Hopefully y'all can see this where I'm pointing. I don't know. Does oh, that show up on your screen? Yes, it does. Okay. So I'm the yellow. I'm going this way. I'm doing like this uh, horseshoe shape. I need to get all my checkers. And this is my, um, is it called the home area, uh, Meeple Lady? I think so. I call it like the first quadrant, home quadrant. Okay. First yeah. quadrant. Yeah. First quadrant sounds cool. Uh, first quadrant area. All Once all your checkers are here, then you can start um, bearing them off. That's right. Right. Bearing off. Mm-hmm. Um, That's correct. And then, yeah. And so once you have all your checkers here, you can start bearing them off. So the object of the game is, uh, to get all of your checkers off here. Uh, and then whoever's, a, it's just a race. Whoever's the first one to do that wins the game. And that's mm-hmm. that's basically it. And I see Meeple Lady's ready to roll doubles. It looks like I'm going to be in trouble, folks. Yeah, so if you <laughs> roll doubles, you get four 
movements of that number. Thank you, yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can move into any location as long as your opponent is not blocked it, and an opponent blocks it when he when they have uh, two or more pieces on that location. If there's a single location, I can stomp on my opponent, and then they have to start <laughs> all the way at the beginning, which is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that stomp on your opponent. <laughs> Okay. okay. So Meeple Lady is doing yeah. four movements of two. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, when you get stomped, you go to the bar. So we always say, see you oh, at the, the bar. See you at the bar, that's right. <laughs> um I've never called it stomping. I love that. I love that term. <laughs> <laughs> you <get> really mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a five and a three. So um I'm gonna use the five to put this checker here. And then the three, I'm going to use it to move this one here. And because it's a single, if Meeple Lady wanted, if she rolled the correct number, she could stomp on me. Or I, I call it hitting, but stomping is a much better term. Uh, she would stomp on me and then put me on the bar, which means I have to start all the way back here. Oh, hi, Games of Fire. Games of Fire says, I like backgammon. I haven't played in a long time. Okay, so I've got a four and a three. Um, okay, I don't like this roll. <laughs> so I want to go here. Okay, we'll talk about. I'm going to put the four. Gosh, that's going to totally open me up to. All right, I'll put the four here, and then I'll take the three over here. So friends in chat, if you've played backgammon, please post in the um, chat. Let us know your experience with that. I, I see there's a few people who um, have played backgammon. Okay, I've got a five and a one. Boo earns. Okay, so I'm going to put the five here, and then I'm going to split this here. Hmm. And one thing that uh, we did note um, before we came on air, uh, this version of the game doesn't have the doubling cube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's my buddy, Jeremy Gaming. He says, I've only tried this two times. I believe good stuff, though. Yeah. And Jeremy Gaming is going to be joining me on Thursday, friends. Uh, we're going to be playing Castles of Burgundy here. Distant Babble says, um, where's Distant Babble? I just saw. Uh, BG has good imitation back in, but I don't understand their scoring system. Oh, yeah. I never actually figured that out. I think they sort of calculate how many points you can get. I don't know. Oh, is that like, oh, after you win or lose or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't get that either. Oh, Is that a ranking system or something? I don't know. Oh, yes. There's the ranking, but then there's also, you see how it says 137 and 135? Like, I don't know what those numbers mean. <laughs> oh, that is, you know what? I didn't know that either until recently. It's like the number of spaces you have left to go in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to stomp on Meeple Lady. I, I feel so mean, bad saying that. Um, that's okay. Oh, my God. I totally, like, miscalculated. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, and that's the one bummer about BGA. There's no undo button. Yeah. Okay, so that is going there. So I've got her. She's, on the, she's at the bar. And then I am going to, oh. Okay, I'll put the five over here, which I don't like doing, but I got to. People lady stopped me too on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing I've never said before. See you at the bar. I like that. <laughs> 
Okay, I can't move those. Uh, so friends, if you see, like I couldn't move this here because there's two of uh, Meeple Lady's checkers there. So that's the one is gone. And then of course, one, two, three, I can't go because there's a bunch more there. So I'm gonna put the three. So I'm gonna take a, no, I gotta take the three here. And then I don't wanna open up anymore. So I'll put the one up here. <laughs> Uh, uh, Amanda Panna says, what does stomping do? That basically, what you do is you hit your opponent and they go back to the bar, which is off the table, basically. And then they have to restart um, at their uh, the starting position up here. For me, at least, it's up here. For me, the ladies down here. Whoops. Okay. So I've got the six and a deuce. Um, so I'm going to take this. And this is the one thing I do like about BG8. It shows you where your moves are going to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I hit this here and I'm going to stomp on Meeple Lady there. Now she goes back to the bar. She has to re-enter in this area here and then she makes her way back towards or she's going to make her journey up to uh, her home or her last final quadrant. Ooh, another good one for Meeple Lady. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you make double sixes. I know, double sixes. <laughs> that's always like, the sweetest feeling, right? <laughs> yeah, unless you're like completely blocked and you can't use it. That's yeah, the worst. Okay, there's a two. So I had to split those. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best move, but Ugh. I regret doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but then, uh, let's see here. Oh, this is me being, we'll see what happens. Oh. Okay, there's the one. That sucks. So okay. I can't do the three, so I'm going to put the three here, so even this out a little bit. Oh, wasted oh. double sixes. We are oh. just talking about that. Okay. So I'm going to go one. So I got double four, so I'm gonna get four fours to play. So two, and then uh, three, and uh, four. <laughs> Everyone in the chat's like, ouch, double six. I know, it's the worst. <sighs> The worst there's... people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the deuce, and then I'll put the one over. Ugh. You know, I'm going to play aggressive. I'm going to stop. Do I stop? Uh... Actually, no, I don't want it because I want to get this over here. Okay. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> okay. So if I do that one there, then I can do two, three, and the fourth one. Again, doubles gets you four numbers, folks. Five here, or I could do this to okay, let's try to get out of there. Oh, darn it. Stomp, stomp. <laughs> Slackfish does bring up a good point. Um, I think Ruel would offer a double at this point if we're available. I totally would. Yeah. Right. I think when I get that double sixes, I was like, oh, I concede. I'll give yep. you your, yeah. your 10 yeah, cents. You, exactly. <laughs> uh, Tate says, yes, old school backgammon. Thank you, Tate, for joining us. Tate Wu, uh, designer of a lot of great games. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, he's, he did the, he's done a bunch of really cool cat games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'm going to put the six here and get stomped again. Yep. There we 
it is. Ooh, I can stomp back. The five and the <laughs> two, which is a seven. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, wasted double fives. <laughs> that hurts. Ooh, th another stomp, folks. Oh my god! And I had two people at the bar. Yeah. I concede. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely where you would do the doubling cube and, and concede. So have you played this on Board Game Arena for a while? I have. I've, I've played it. Um, it's, it's funny. I started this Board Game Arena account years ago. Uh -huh. And when I first started, I played a bunch of backgammon. And then I just totally forgot about Board Game Arena. And then, <laughs> and then the pandemic. One, and then the pandemic hit. And then I was like, oh, okay, I can go back to Board Game Arena. And that's when I re-up for the premium membership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, now I'm, I'm playing a, a bunch of stuff on here now. Yeah, it's been a lifesaver, just, you know, it, having some type agreed. of gaming. Agreed, yeah. Do you have, like, a regular gaming group for um, Board Game Arena or anything? Oh, uh, yeah, I have my Tuesday night game with um, my guy friends um, that we all don't hang out, so we hang out virtually. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing this because I am i don't want to get, I'm trying not to get hit. <laughs> Do a lot of your gaming group play, do a lot of them play backgammon or is it like just not like people outside of your normal gaming group? Uh, outside of my game group, just uh, okay. Mark, my friend Mark. Um, I think you've met him at the conventions. He's usually yes. my convention buddy. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, pretty good at backgammon. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'm going to have to open this up because I have to use a two. Um, so I used my six. I have to use the two here. Oh, actually, I could have done a different move, but again, there's no undo, so I got to live with it. <laughs> <sighs> oh, double oh, man. Okay. Oh, uh, so as you're finishing your move, uh, Meeple Lady, so I just, I'm looking at comments here. I want to uh, shout out. Thank you, Slackfish, for gifting five subs. That is so generous of you. Friends, we've got an alert, alert. We've got five new gift subscriptions. Thanks to our friend Slackfish. Thank you, Slackfish. You get the Moroccan. Yay! Five gift subs. Five. That's gift, 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 gift. Thank you, Slackfish. You also get this and the clappy hands. Five gift subs. Thanks to our friend Slackfish. Really appreciate your support. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us, friends. Uh, my name is Ruel. We have Meeple Lady in the house tonight. It's so cool hanging out with my friend Meeple Lady. We're playing backgammon. This is a game. You know what? Now that I think about it, uh, Meeple Lady, this is the first time we've ever played backgammon together. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I know yeah. we've always talked about it, but mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, for whatever reason, we never got to it until <laughs> tonight. So, yeah. And uh, sorry, I, I need to do one more thing, Meeple Lady. We also have the Brothers Murph on Gen Con TV. Y'all have raided us. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everybody. And because it's the Brothers Murph, we do this all the time. Uh, whenever someone raises us, and Brothers Murph have been so kind, they've always raided us. This is the raiding hat uh, that <laughs> Michelle made me. Uh, this is made of a manila folder and duct tape and a little Christmas tinsel. Thank you for raiding us, friends. Thank you for the raid. Kestrel, I see you. Marie Mac, thank you. Game Free Girls in the house. Ruel. We got the maracas tonight. We've got the clappy hands. We've got the raiding hat. We've got the gift things. All kinds of stuff going on. I'm going to keep the raiding hat on as we play backgammon with our friend <laughs> Meeple Lady. <laughs> Meeple Lady, this, I don't know if you... If this is what you signed up for, but uh. no, I feel so underdressed. I don't have a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I should start telling people they should wear a hat. Uh, Gardner, thank next time. you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I also have another thing, but I'm going to save it for a little, uh, a little Ooh, okay. while longer here. So, yeah, Slackfish uh, Viking theme backgammon is what we're mm -hmm. playing right now. Uh, so it's my turn. I've got a six and a deuce. There's the six. And uh, friends, now that I'm in my final quadrant or home section, I can start bearing off. And to bear off, you basically take the number you have and you can put those off the board. I have a two here. I cannot bear that off because uh, Meeple Lady is in the two and the three slots. What I can do, unfortunately, the only thing I can do is move this here 
And now that opens me up to be hit, which I am going to get hit right now. And I will see y'all at the bar. Ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Meeple Lady, you're a, you're a fan of the Brothers Murph as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good times. <laughs> yeah, they're so they're so cool. They're just been so supportive, and yeah, Nick and Mike are great. And actually, I had them on last week. We played number nine. Oh, that's so cool. I love that game. I love that game too. It's so yeah. portable. <laughs> yeah, totally right. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like a great game for you know um, family events. Mm -hmm. You know, easy to teach, pretty easy to learn, but it's always a nice challenge. Yeah, it's very brain burnery, but like fun, and people want to keep playing yep. immediately because they're like, "Oh, we finally get it." Also, you can scale up. Like, if you have multiple copies, you can have just like one giant game of, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, we call it Mega Number Nine when we have Mega multiple copies. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is uh, Michelle, my wife. She says, "I got you, Meeple Lady, one Viking hat on the way." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Slackfish, uh, again, one of our regulars. Uh, we love meeting all your friends via your stream. I'm so glad to meet Maple, Maple Lady tonight. Agreed. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you all, friends. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a six and a one. I'm going to move here. Probably going to get hit, but that's how you roll. There it is. Aha. Okay. One, two. Oh my gosh. Really? Oh, such oh. a lucky friends. That was luck. Lucky roll. Oh, there's oh, a double there six. Oh go. no. Okay, I don't like that. And now oh. we're off to the races, friends. Oh yeah, agreed. A slackfish. The backgammon comeback is the best comeback. <laughs> So now I'm going to start bearing off. Uh, there's nothing in my six, but I can take that six and put it here off the board. Then I've got a two. There's no two in the slot, but I'm going to take this one off the five and put it in the two slot. Ooh, oh, my cool. gosh. Yeah. Okay, friends. Now I'm in trouble. That double five hurts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Got now this is the part when I'm like rattling the dice in your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so close. I can feel it right here in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess if it was dice, it'd be like this. Exactly. Ugh. Just need some doubles. Oh, Panda says, please close the comment. We can't see the board. Go direct. Okay, there. Okay. <laughs> The nurse has shown up to the game. Okay, uh, so I've got my five and my deuce. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. Oh my gosh, double <laughs> six. <laughs> So again, friends, if you have a doubles, you got four movement. Oh, measly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Five goes off, and then the three goes to the one hole. Oh, I saw that six. I was like, not another double. Oh, my God. I need some doubles. Yeah. Okay, this game's getting close, friends. Oh. Okay, two and one. And I think at this point... Yeah, there's no way. There's no way, yeah. <laughs> Even with doubles, yeah. Okay, and there it is, friends. I am the first to bear <laughs> off all my checkers. Well, GG. GG. Good game, <laughs> lady. 
Um, I always propose a rematch if sure. you would, if you have time to do that. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm down. Awesome. We're going to rematch friends. So thanks for sticking around. Um, my name is Ruel. I'm here with a meeple lady. We are playing backgammon, the hot new game uh, from 5,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> It's hot new two player. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, speaking of uh, backgammon, um, do you, you you said you keep a, uh, a board in your car at all times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in your trunk. So, do you have like a, a like a super nice board at home, like in your game room, or? I don't. I've always wanted to get one, but it's like I'm never playing it at home. Usually, I'm out and about. Um, yeah. But eventually, I think now with uh, you know the new place, having a little bit more, having a lot more room from my old previous place like i totally want to get a nice set yeah <laughs> but I, I do see some sets that are just like so expensive and right i don't I mean, think i could ever drop that much but i'll, I'll drop some things nice <laughs> same agreed um games of fire redeem 100 bruno points thank you games of fire i just for you i'm going to hydrate thank you um Net netters has to go thank you netters for hanging out appreciate it this and babble says they have a back end award in my car trunk as well nice Yay. Okay, so here's um, okay. So Meeple Lady has moved, and then I've rolled a three and the one. Uh, here's my three and my one. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see other comments while Meeple Lady goes. Netter says, "Fun watching play." Shout out to Meeple Lady. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> Table stop G3 says it's been fun. Good night. Thank you, the table stop. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hi, thank you for hanging out. Yeah. Twin Flower's got the meat or Bruno emojis. Thank you, Twin Flower. <laughs> those are so cute. Aren't those great? I, I love those. <laughs> you haven't met our pug yet, huh? You haven't met Bruno no, yet. No, I haven't. Oh. One of these things, yeah. <laughs> It's the worst. I know the single ones are always brutal. I know. Okay, three and two. Okay. Oh, nice. Of course. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I can put this double four here. Actually, no. You know, I can get out. One, two. Yeah, let's do this. Ah, those are still nice. <laughs> The thing is, well, because I can't bring them here. Oh, I see. Kind of yeah. limited. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll do this. One, two, and then three, four here. Hmm. Distant Babble says, the backgammon travel case makes for a nice way to take other games. Currently, I have Love Letter in it, but usually keep Copy of Hive Pocket and Guillotine. Oh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, Guillotine is one I love from yeah. way back when. <laughs> way back when, right? Yeah. Uh, more more uh, doubles here. Ones. Murray Mack has subscribed for a second month in a row. I want to thank Murray Mack. Murray Mack, you get this, you get this. I want to thank you for subscribing. So thank you for the continuing, not the new, but continuing subscription. Uh, thank you, Maria, Max, appreciate it. Woo! Yay! Yay! <laughs> and uh, it's my turn, so a six and a tray from there to here. Okay, the raid is done, so I'm taking the raiding hat off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're done raiding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, another six in the tray, so we're doing the same move uh, here to here. 
Oh, oh doubles. So nice. Oh, I can't move my back ones. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> doubles is always fun. Yes. So Meeple Lady is filling up her home board or her final quadrant. And my last two guys got stuck in back. Yeah. Okay. So now I am here. One, two, three, four. I can't do that. Um, so I'm going to go four and five. <laughs> I like Ben's suggestion about talking about guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, folks. Talking about guillotine, we need more games about dealing with a hem, dealing with the ruling class. I agree, Ben. I totally agree. <laughs> Marie Mack was talking about her quiver, their quiver. Ah, do you I, have a quiver? I don't. Do you? I don't. I always wanted one. Like it seems like such a handy like thing to travel with. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. Three and a one. So I'm gonna take you to the bar. Okay. It's inevitable. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, I got. Oh, uh, there it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, six and a one there. <laughs> so much blocking. I know. Yeah, uh, I got that, like, that perfect roll there to get me over the hump. Oh, I'm going to hang my head in shame. <laughs> uh, five. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to do this here. That'll open up a spot for you. Oops. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, this is going to give you a chance to hit. Oof. Hit that one. There, there it is. Go. Nice. How the tables have turned, friends. Uh, people, no uh, people in chat are talking about the quiver. Mm -hmm. um, let me see quiver bolt. Yeah, is the the bolt a smaller one or? Oh, I've never even heard of that. Oh, okay. So, oh, I need a three. <sighs> oh, okay, cool. They look, they look so handy and cute, and you put stickers on them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, the double ones. Darn it. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Let's see here. Can I do this? I can. Okay. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be stuck here for a while, friends. friends. <laughs> uh... Oof. Ooh, I see. Wasted the double threes. Oh no, five and a three, folks. Got two two people on board on on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love how Board Game Arena says you cannot play. Yeah. <laughs> Like, See, yeah, I, I like the con, the con, you know, like playing because it tells you what you can and can't do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love a quiver. I, that's those things are so cool. I, I'm gonna have to work on. Uh, anyone uh, know anyone at Quiver? You know, we're always open to sponsorships here for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Maybe we'll get some by the time we can travel again. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm hoping. Oh, let's make sure. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's your six and a two. Come on, board game Marine. I could use double fives right now. <laughs> double fives would be nice. Uh, there's a five. Yep. There's a five. <laughs> Thanks, board game arena. <laughs> See here. 
four. There's one of them. Mm -hmm. So for those of you watching at home who've never played, I have a five that put me on the board, but I have another one that cannot play on the two. So that's why I still have a, a checker up there. <sighs> oh, man. Oh. That was rough. Yeah. Oh, and she got oh, that little three. Speaking of rough. Oh. Nice. I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to leave myself exposed. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my gosh. Come on, double sixes. Give me a chance. What? Oh, my God. That's so Bad worse. Roll. Okay. Legends DM is in the house. Thanks for joining us, Legends. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Come on, double six. All right, there's that. Oh, so this is the point where I would concede the game, friends. <laughs> well done, Meeple Lady. Well yeah. done. Good comeback. Like, yeah, great the comeback. The game can, can turn at any time, pretty much. If you yeah. get knocked out, you just fall so behind, like my yeah. last game for myself. Yep. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I love this game. You know, I'll always, I will never turn down a game of back game. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. Okay. So there's my four and three. Well, I'm going to get gammon, folks. That's a gammon. <laughs> no, you, you got some. Oh, no, off, I do have right? some. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. So gammon is when you don't have any pieces off and your opponent um, wins. Backgammon is when you have no pieces off and your opponent wins, and you what is it? You have some stuck in their last quadrant. Yeah. Yeah. Like either at the bar or at the the beginning. That's right. Yeah. Well, at least I didn't get backgammon. GG. GG. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Um, I mean, we have, we are tied one to one. Mm -hmm. um, would you play one more? Sure, I'm down. I'm sure, like I don't want yeah. to keep you from. Okay, no, no, cool. we need to know who the true backgammon winner is tonight. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, first, folks. We're going to find out the champion backgammon player. Oh my god, I'm totally going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've proposed a rematch, and we are going to go to the game. Thanks again for hanging out with us, folks. Uh, my name is Ruel, and I'm here with Meeple Lady. We are playing the hot new game backgammon. See, so I'm gonna go. Let's go here and here. Okay. Legends DM had a bacon cheeseburger. Ooh. Oh Ooh. no, they didn't have. It. Okay, what's for? Oh, they're getting. They're thinking about um, bacon cheeseburger pizza. Daigle says Gammon is not the villain in Zelda games. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with the Zelda games, unfortunately. I don't either. Oh. <laughs> so let me do this. This this and this Six. four and a three put the three here and the four down here ooh this is good oh Nice four and a deuce. So where's the four? Oh man. Okay. I'll put the four there and I'm gonna leave myself open here. <coughs> Ooh, lucky. <laughs> Oh, that's a good roll for you. Yeah, that's a perfect roll for me. Oh, 
my gosh, there's so much talk about pizza in the chat. I'm getting hungry. Too. <laughs> what are people talking about? Oh. Yeah, mushrooms it's... and salami pizza. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite pizza toppings, Maple Lady? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a very controversial like, thing. Um, you like? Uh, please, please tell me you're on the pineapple team. I'm on I the pineapple. On the pineapple. Team. I'm, if, nice. I, I feel like it's a California thing. You okay. know, I love the pineapple. I love like the barbecue chicken pizzas. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, like CPK style or whatever. Yeah, okay. so that's that. Um, yeah. But I don't eat the other meats, so I think it's like um, I'm sure there's a lot of good meats out there, but yeah. I usually eat, like the vegetable or the the barbecue chicken ones. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Here in our house, I am on the pineapple team. Michelle and Lauren are not on the pineapple team. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you? Uh, so Michelle and I really love anchovies on our pizza. Do you do anchovies? You know, I've never actually had anchovies, but I wouldn't mind them. I like fish. Yeah. I like that savory flavor of things. I mean, yep. you know, sardines and toast and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> It might be like that the whole Filipino thing with bagong, you know? Oh, like, okay, you know, so I, I can't have bagong because it's shrimp and I'm allergic to shellfish. Oh, yeah, okay, which is like yeah. the worst. But um, yeah, the sardines and the, the Lido cans. Yeah. Oh, like wow. I, didn't, oh. I know. I'm like the worst Filipino ever. Like I can't oh. eat shellfish. And my whole family's oh, like, oh. all shellfish. So, you know, when wow. you do the the... The what are they like the boiling crab things? That yeah, do. yeah, that's what. Oh yeah, my God. I can never go. My my family's like, oh, we'll just go without you. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it's all basically yeah, crab, all shellfish, right? Mm -hmm. oh, what a bummer. I know. So it's okay. I'm a cheap yeah. date. I'll have the. I'll have <laughs> can a, you eat other fish though? The other seafood? Yes. So oh. like straight up fish, you know, sushi stuff like that. Um, oh, okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would rather be allergic to shellfish than not eat sushi. Yeah. You know? So I love like, you know, sashimis, tunas, stuff like that. Um, nice. I love those. Yeah. No sushi would be really tough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Ooh, I'm getting such low numbers. Ooh, Distant Babel's talking pineapples and jalapenos. Wow. I oh, I love that. jalapenos. Oh, yeah. actually, I do. I have, yeah, that is good. And Marie Max says, OMG, I thought you were going to talk about bolot for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had bolot. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just not a thing that's around. I think, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, folks. If you, you don't know what it is, please uh, Google it. Um, Dago says, When I was doing field work in the Philippines, we stop at the road restaurant where you choose from the cooking pots alongside the road. Yeah, yeah. I love street food, and yeah, the Philippines has some of the best street food out there. I remember some like the fish balls, there's like a fish yeah. ball guy in the cart, That's right? Yeah, <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we but just like... when... oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, well, Michelle and I, the last time we were out in Cebu, I think three years ago, we found a roadside babinka guy. Oh, my gosh. It was phenomenal. <laughs> to, to this day, probably, like, he literally was just, he had, like, a little wood fire uh, stove cart, and he mm -hmm. was just making little babinkas fresh there. And Michelle and I would always go in the morning and pick some up. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I mean, these are the things that I should have been working on during the pandemic, like learning all the <laughs> Filipino desserts. <laughs> oh, yeah, same, same. Well, I actually uh, got um, a recipe for um, pandasal. Oh, so, I'm going to try yeah. some this weekend. I'm going to, I'm excited to try that. But um, the only thing I've made yeah. this kind of pandemic is uh, the ube jam. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how'd that come out? Oh, it was really good. I was like passing out little jars to my friends, like dropping oh. them off on their like doorstep so I wouldn't, you know, see oh, them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, nice. that was good. It was a lot of stirring. It was like I, I was gonna say, it, it's gotta be a lot of yeah, gotta be a lot of work. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, Amanda Panda is asking for the recipe. <laughs> oh, you can Google it. It's a burnt lupia. It's like an old website, but oh, that's the recipe burnt lupia, that I use. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's Very, the old food blog, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so, folks. So just so you know, folks, I'm pretty much in trouble here because I am still stuck over here. Uh, excuse me. Way back here in Meeple Ladies uh, section here. I know, but I got like a really bad roll. So I... <laughs> oh, the 6-1. Yeah, that, that does help me. If I can if I can get you to the bar, I got a chance. 
Token fan forever. Thanks for hanging out, my friend. Yes, we are playing. Old, we're going old school tonight with uh, some uh, backgammon. Oh, <laughs> darn it! That four was, two was not the role I wanted. A twin flower googled balut. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so twin flower. Any comments on a balut? <laughs> okay, there's the two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Marie Max says, don't Google that. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another four and one, really? Come on. So bad. It'll be all set up in that home quadrant. Yeah. Oh, that's your role right there. That's what you needed. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's my six and one. Now I'm in trouble. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Let's see. Oh, I could. You could. But I don't want to. Because then I'll. Yeah, right? you're good. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, you'll be leaving yourself. Yeah, open. I, I mean, I would like you to, but. <laughs> I'm just going to leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, that's a smart play. I'm going to go down here. Hopefully. Yeah, I need to get lucky. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. oh there it is. There it is. Boom, boom. All right. I need to get super lucky here, friends. On, three or four. Okay, there's the three. I'll move this here. I'm so dead. Oh gosh! Really? Oh, nice roll. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you're shaking the dice in my face. I know, but then you probably <laughs> like doubling die. You know. <laughs> yep. I would concede. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a shot here, I think. If you did the four or five. Yeah, this is danger. Okay. I need to roll five. Give me a five, uh, friends. Oh. Boom. Heart attack. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And there it is. Come on, double six. Give me a shot, at least. <laughs> no. Okay, there's so I would concede. Oh my god. Oh my god, you might get that gammon. <laughs> oh come on. I don't want to get gammon. Come on. Double six. So friends, I've already lost this game. I'm just hoping not to get gammon. And it's okay. I sh <laughs> I should survive. Okay. Yeah. One, two. Come on, let me bear off at least. Oh, one. that's a good one. Yeah. Little there you go. too little, too late. <laughs> that and that <laughs> twin flower is talking about uh, bullet and i think this emote says it all <laughs> <laughs> it's our food it's fine oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, all these doubles where were you earlier in the game bga oh uh, just rubbing salt in the wound <laughs> <laughs> four and two and now for the final roll for meeple ladies victory oh wait i guess i gotta oh. bear off here there's that and the five and the two there you go there it is Yay! Yay! GG, beautiful lady. <laughs> GG. Well done. Well done. Oh my gosh. You get the maracas. Yay! The, yeah. Yay, beautiful lady. <laughs> GG. Good game. Yeah. I, I'm so glad you got we got to hang out tonight. I appreciate you hanging out a little longer too, so we could do the best of the uh three games and determine who is the world champion back end player. <laughs> Meeple Lady, you get the crown tonight. Well done, good game. Thank you again for joining yeah. me. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I'm always down to play back Ammon. So cool. It's, awesome. It's hang out with you. Um, you know, I haven't seen you in forever, like in real life. Yeah. So this is great. Absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. So we, we can't do the stuff of play games in real life, but this is the next best thing. <laughs> Want to th uh, thank our sponsors, Van Rider Games and Holly True Illustration. Thank you uh, for sponsoring the channel. That's vanridergames.com uh, and hollychuart.com. That's hollychu, C H I U art.com. Uh, Maple Lady, where can um, our friends uh, get a hold of you on social media? 
Um, on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, I'm Meeple Lady, and my website is BoardGameMeepleLady.com. Awesome. And uh, any any new projects or anything going on with you, or uh, do you have an upcoming five by segment or anything? Um, uh, not for a little bit. I do have okay. uh, an announcement on Friday, so um, pay attention to the socials on that. Nice. I'm planning a little fun something. So, Exciting. and hopefully, I'm just getting into more gaming. Like once now that the move is done, and I feel like you know the energy of everything of the pandemic. You know, for a while there, it felt a little burnt out, but. I feel like, you know, we're trying to all find our groove again and I'm excited to play more games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's that's important. Um, you know, glad you brought that up as far as, you know, everyone, we're all dealing with this, you know, pandemic and mental health is very important. So friends, remember, take breaks, you know, do what you got to do to, you know, stay safe and just, you know, mentally, physically and, and so forth. So, um, yeah, I... That's it, <laughs> Meeple Lady. Thank you again for um, kicking my butt on backgammon. Much appreciated. And uh, until, uh, oh, uh, Amanda says we are going to raid uh, Bonza Knight. Yeah, let's let's raid Bonza Nader. Um, friends, uh, in chat, hang tight. I'll be there in a second, but I'm going to shut this down. On behalf of Meeple Lady, thank you so much for joining us. Come back tomorrow. I'm going to play uh, King of Tokyo Dark Edition with uh, Michelle Nord. All right? So until then, friends, take care. Bye now. Bye, thank you.